Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is December 14th, 2021, and we're here again with Elba Cabrera for part four of her oral history. And Elba will be talking a little bit about some stories from her time at the Girl Scouts, uh, some additional stories, and then going back to work at the Department of Aging um, after she had retired, and then also all of the really just incredible board work that she's done over the years. Um, and anything else Elba wants to share as well. So, so Elba, why don't you go ahead and start, start us off here. Okay, yeah, my experience at Girl Scouts was really uh, an educational one for me because, and I think I've mentioned this before, that traveling the country uh, just opened up a new world for me. Absolutely. There were so many people that I met uh, so many things that I did uh, and tried, uh, but uh, I'd, I'd like to share some of the uh, stories that <laughs> stick out of my mind. Absolutely. And uh, it was, let me see, I have one that's not so, it's painful, Yeah. but I want to share it. And that was, uh, we were in the Midwest, uh, my uh co-workers, we had several of us were out there for for, uh, for a conference and um, Christine Lightborn was one I remember her and we had maybe two others and what happened was that uh, after we finished work during the day we went to look for a place to to uh, have dinner and, and a drink sure, you know, sure. to relax. And we found um, through the, uh, that was the sort of the beginning of the internet too. Okay, yeah, So yeah. we found this country club restaurant and we decided to go there. We, we actually called and they said, no, no, we're open. When we got there uh, and we were all women of color, Yeah. When we got there, we noticed it was a hesitancy, but since we already had made the reservation, they sat us down, but they sat us down away from everybody else. Okay, yeah. And we know, you know, we began to notice that if this was not, that we were not welcome. Yeah. And uh, we we sat there and we, we did, we did eat, we, we ordered and everything, but I never forgot the terrible feeling of not being wanted. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we sort of took it, you know, we, uh, I want to say we understood. It, you may understand it, but it still hurts. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, it was just not a good experience. But on the other hand, uh, we had wonderful uh, experiences throughout uh, uh, the time I was at Girl Scouts. And it was always uh, pleasant. And I could say that I, I learned a lot from the people because of the way they not only treated us, but also that we all had the same uh, uh, mission. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. all had the same mission to help girls grow and be themselves. Um, another time, uh, and this again was well, it wasn't that pleasant, but it had nothing to do with race. This was I was up in Macy at yeah. the, the conference center, which I just, you know, most of us loved going there. Because it was so, you know, full of nature and yeah. and uh, they had the best meals <laughs> and it, it was just great. So this day, I got a rash mm -hmm. on my arm and it was really itching me, you know, scratching and scratching. And someone says, you, you know, you really should go to the hospital and check it out. So they and they they had everything there. They the 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 staff drove me. Okay, yeah. I went to the hospital in the area, and you know what I thought it was? Uh, 
Poison Ivy or something like Not that? Not Poison, what's the other oh, one? Oh, Poison Oak? No, 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 the one where, where, where from the deer. Uh, oh, uh, Lyme, Lyme, Lyme disease. disease. Okay, yeah. That's what, because that was, you know, something that people get there. Sure. So the ner the doctor saw me and she says, no, she says, it's not that, but uh, it's just a very bad rash that you have. And it was probably something bit you, but it wasn't, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was so scared because one of my co-workers had gotten Lyme disease. Oh, wow. And she had it from before. She suffered a lot, yeah. you know, uh, with the with the line, and so I was scared that I was going to get it. But thank God I didn't. Thank God. But I I scratched so hard that my skin almost opened up. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible. Wow. So that was another incident. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that was that was nature. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, and then you know. Uh, our our organization used to have uh, a, I'm not going to say parties but get togethers you know so that we could know each other because many of my friends uh, that, I, that I still have came from out of town yeah and they would come uh, every month to for meetings sure and it was just great one of them uh, who lives in Texas, uh, and I still, uh, I still see. Well, I haven't seen her since COVID, but um, she was just wonderful, and uh, I visited her uh, several times in Texas. Yeah, and uh, stayed at her home. And when, uh, hold it a minute. Yeah. I, one of my dear friends, B, and I mentioned her before, uh, B. Rocha lives in Texas. She lives in Wakahachi, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been there several times, and it's just uh, wonderful. Even before we, before uh, I left, I visited her there, and after. Yeah. So we've kept our friendship and. Uh, one of the wonderful things about her is that I would say to her, oh, I'd like to see the missions yeah. in Texas. She says, sure, and we would go. And then one day I said, I always wanted to go to San Antonio. She says, that's just down the road a piece. That's nothing. <laughs> you know, it's like a four hour drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's at least four hour drive in Texas, it seems like. <laughs> so, uh -huh. So we went, oh, I, I've been to San Antonio twice, and I love it. I do too. Isn't it I the walk? It's the, best, the, the, the best city the river walk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great. And the food's wonderful. And the food too. was wonderful. I'm just so sorry for them that they have this governor yeah. and all these people now. But, I know, absolutely. And, uh, but uh, I did have good times with her. She took us also to Fort Worth, uh, Fort Worth which is not that far from her. It was maybe 45 minutes. Yeah. And uh, they have a parade of the cows every uh, day. Oh, oh, wow. And, and you, you're waiting for these cows to come along, you know, to walk. And then when you see them, I said to my girlfriend, I said, I, 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 they look like seniors. I <laughs> says, because they came from, a, I said, are they in the nursing home or something? Because they were all bony. <laughs> she says, yeah, I know what you mean. Another time we went to the courthouse right there. And, you know, in New York, you can't just walk into the courthouse. You yeah. have the uh, security and all that. And she said, oh, you, we, we could go in. And we walked in. I yeah. don't know how it is now. Yeah. But we walked in. And we even sat at the where the uh, judge sits, <laughs> and I had the the uh, the, the uh, ha hammer. Well, it's not a hammer. The um, gav gavel, gavel, gavel. Gav gavel. Yeah. And we just had. I says, you know, I says in New York you can't do this. I, says, no. I know, I know. <laughs> but another time she came to New York, 
uh, where she came often, but this particular time, I said, would you like to go to the Rockefeller Center to see the trees? Oh, yes. It was freezing that day. <laughs> it, it had to be like maybe in the 20s or 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cold. And we went, and she had a raincoat. Because, you know, when, when you travel like that, you know, you tend to, to go a little lighter. Sure. And I said, are you sure? Are you sure you want to stay? Because she was so <laughs> cold. I said, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But we did see the tree, and she just loved it. And, and when we get together, we reminisce. Absolutely. Another time I was with another friend in Minnesota. Oh, wow. And... Uh, we, you know, we did our work, and at night we decided we were going to go, and it was in the winter, um, we wanted to go see the ice, the ice show that they have there that's very famous. This is in Minnesota, and we, we went at, at night, and it was, I had never felt cold like that in my life, and when we got there, she says, do you want to get out? I said, no, I could see it from the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say the same thing. <laughs> and I, I, I tell everybody that when I got home, I was so happy to be in New York with, with uh, our weather not being as cold. But I had never, never experienced cold the way I did. I'm That's sure. It. it was, oh, it was... Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I don't ever want to experience. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's pretty bad. But you know, I had so many little stories uh, that I met young people. Yeah. And uh, one in particular was uh, she was already probably about eighteen and had been in the Girl Scouts since she was little. And that was in Pensacola, Florida. Oh, okay, sure. And she became pretty well known throughout the Girl Scout because she was just so good. Yeah. And uh, I was just so proud to, to meet her. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always wondered, you know, what happened, what happened to her. Sure. I'm sure she's doing well. And another time, <laughs> I... And I was by myself. I went to uh, in Texas, mm. Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas. I feel yeah. like I've seen a sign for that. But yeah, I don't remember it's where it, is. Uh, it was um, a very small town. Yeah. And I was alone. Yeah. And I drove down to from the from Dallas. I drove down to Paris, mm. and I met another young lady who was around 14 and really sweet. And uh, she also was a, a lifetime Girl Scout. Yeah. And I always remembered her because she was so uh, warm and so uh, wonderful. Yeah. And we talked a lot. So that was Paris. And... Uh, I have another story. Sure. <laughs> I was coming from Texas. I was going. I was going to. Uh, well, I was at the airport. I'm trying to remember where where it was. I think I was coming home. Anyway, <laughs> I get on the plane. And um, what happened was that I. I went into the bathroom. You know when you. When the plane is down, uh, it hasn't, you know, it's still on the ground. Yeah. I asked the flight attendant if I could use the bathroom. She says, sure. And I went in, and when I tried to get out, the handle fell oh, off. Oh, no. And I started banging, banging <laughs> on the... Luckily, luckily we were on the ground, and, and the maintenance came and got me out. Oh, and that's terrible. I wow. said... Oh my God, if I had been in mid-air, this would have been a... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or if it took off while you were in there too. Yes, oh my God. yes. So, but wow. uh, it was, you know, a lot of adventures. And I'm going to end it with this because I have many stories. But uh, one of my first trips, we were on uh, 
in the airport and we were waiting to you know get online and we were online and uh, we were hoping to maybe get on first class if yeah. we could and when we got there the, the we started talking you know and they thought we were flight attendants uh, because we were in uniform yeah and the yeah. uniform was very much like the flight attendants it was like a bluish sure. it was blue anyway uh, we started talking we made friends and everything and then um, when we got we were going to go on uh, they told us that they put us in first class <laughs> <laughs> So you know I wore my uniform a lot after that, but it didn't always happen. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> did uh, did you have to go? Well, I don't I don't know if um, actually I don't know enough about either the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts to know if this is actually a thing. But um, did you have to go on camping trips with uh, individual no, no, troops? No, no. But we ever? did. But we what we did do was remember I told you I was with the self evaluation. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. We visited some of the. Camps. I see, I see. Yeah. So they'd be out there and then you'd stop by. But uh, it was mainly, you know, it was more to see how they were doing. Sure, with sure. The, with the, and I don't remember seeing the girls in the camp when we went. I see, I see. One of the, one of the highlights for me was in Arkansas. Okay, yeah. Because uh, the, the camp was up, very high up, like... It was a, like a mount, mountainous part. Yeah. And when we went, they showed us this chapel that was uh -huh. all the way up there, and it looked like like the chapel was part of heaven. Wow. And I never forgot that. I says, oh, you know, this must be wonderful to come and and pray here. Yeah. Because yeah, it was yeah. just so close to the sky and the cl the clouds. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That was my one of my first trips to Arkansas. Wow! I went to uh, Little Rock, and then after that, I, one day we went up to the camp. Okay, sure. That's sure. how, because like I said, there were things that I did that I never would have done in my life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, leaving, you know, Girl Scouts was uh, bittersweet because. Yeah. Uh, I had spent 10 years, 10 wonderful years, yeah. and uh, I appreciate the fact that I was able to do it at the late stage in my life, you know, I was yeah. already 50-something, uh, I was 60 okay. when I started to work there, 59. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got this opportunity to work there. And do you know something that, well, the executive director that uh, was before I, I worked there, uh, Frances Hesselbein, and she was mm -hmm. responsible for, for uh, the whole uh, diversity thing and, and doing changes. Sure. And she, she had to retire at 70 because that was the, that was the rules there. Okay, I at see. that time. I see. Frances Hesselbein left there. Uh, I did meet her before she left, uh, and I'll tell you that story too, but yeah. she's 104 years old, and she's still working. Wow. She works out of the University of Pittsburgh. Okay, wow. And she's incredible. Yeah. She's incredible. 104, wow. 104. So imagine she could have given, and she's still, you know, able to, to function. Yeah. So she could have given Girl Scouts some more, a lot more, lot more yeah. if they had kept her. Wow. But you know, then that was changed because of the the laws that you couldn't discriminate with your with age. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was Francis, and and how did I meet Francis? Uh, you know, I told you before that my friend had re recommended me, and I got the job there. Yeah. Well, before. Before that, uh, and she, you know how uh, uh, she contacted me at uh, at a hop because she uh. they were looking for a speaker, 
And when she described the speaker, her name, my friend's name was Nancy Garfield. She passed about a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, when she described the speaker, I says, oh my goodness, that's my sister. Yeah. That's Evelina. So I told her, do you mind if I recommend my sister? She yeah. says, no. Well, Evelina went to speak at Macy. Ah. And I went, up, I went with her. Yeah. And uh, Francis met her and they clicked. Yeah. Because the two of them were just, you know, the same, you know, same characters, the yeah. same people. They wanted to do good for. And uh, when Evelina passed, she sent me the most beautiful letter. Mm. You know, that she, you know, she was sorry and she was so, you know, grateful for her. And yeah. It was very nice. Wow. So that's how I remember Frances. So I'm on Facebook with her now. Okay, yeah. 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 And so are, you know, a lot of the people from Girl Scouts. Yeah. But wow. Isn't that something? That is something. She, she has a foundation, I believe, too. Okay. I'll have to yeah, look, I'll have yeah. To look her Francis Hesselmeyer. Wow. A hundred and four years old. Wow. Was, yeah. was she originally from New York, or do you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I'm not sure because I could tell you this: a lot of the Girl Scouts, you know, staff, they were from all over the country. Yeah. A lot of them came from other places and stayed in New York. Yeah. And then when they they retired, they went back, maybe not to their home, but to another state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that's why we met so many people that weren't from, from the city. Absolutely. Yeah, but it was good. It was a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess, I guess that's my Girl Scout story. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You know, before before we move on, I just realized there were certain people that were very uh, good to me at Girl Scouts, my supervisor. Uh, there was Edith, and then there was Jackie Libowitz, mm. Jacqueline, and Cheryl Schulte. Okay. They were really uh, very positive and, and helped me to grow. Yeah. So I just want to say that. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Absolutely. All right, then. So, let's go on. Okay, let's go on. So, um, you talked a, a little bit about your, um, it was, what, it, two retirement parties? Is that right? That you oh, yeah. That yeah. Last time? Um, yes. It sounded wonderful and a, a, a good way to end your career, or at least so you thought. Well. Um, but you ended up going back to the Department of Aging. Yeah. So if you want to maybe talk a little bit about uh, the, rel the you know, brief amount of time that you spent retired and then how you... Oh, what happened back. was that uh, when I retired, I really hadn't thought about what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what <laughs> I, I was like... The first, you know, the first few months, you're, you're great. You know, yeah. you're on your own and all that. And then, as the months and the weeks went by, the weeks and the months and the days, I was getting bored. Yeah. And I was spending a lot of money because, <laughs> you know, you're home and you, you go shopping and you go to the theater. Yeah. Well, one day, I, uh, my former boss at the Department for the Aging um, called me and wanted to meet me for lunch because we uh, we had a really good uh, relationship so Karen Karen Schaefer uh, called and then I went to meet her yeah and it was I met with her and her deputy was Janice Chu so these two wonderful ladies were part of my being happy at, at department for the aging yeah and we had a great lunch, and then, uh, you know, she asked me what I was doing, and I told her, I said, oh, you know, uh, it's kind of boring yeah, <laughs> being yeah. home, uh, because I was used to being out. And all over the place. And all over <laughs> the place. And so I said to her, uh, she said to me, she says, Elba, would you consider working part-time? Yeah. And I said, yeah. And 
and she says, yeah, I'd like you to, to come. You have a job with me. Yeah. And, and, and uh, the days would be Monday through Wednesday, and you'd have Thursday through Sunday free. Yeah. I said, that sounds great. Yeah. So I went, and uh, I went sort of, it wasn't even an interview, it was just getting to know my new boss. Okay, sure. And, uh, you know, we talked. They wanted me to do outreach, and I did, uh, and, and that's one of the things that I, I had done before. Yeah. But there were other programs, and uh, it was to work on work, work in, uh, do workshops okay, for yeah. seniors. This was a new department. Okay, sure. And, you know, they asked me, that would be something I would, would like to do. And I said, yeah, you know, it was good. And it was, you know, three days a week. Yeah. And I was going to be paid well. Yeah. So I, I accepted. And I said to myself, well, I can do this for about five years. Yeah. Yeah. That'll, that'll be enough. Uh, <laughs> little did I know I was going to stay there 10 years. <laughs> wow. But wow. I really uh, felt that I did something for our community. Absolutely. Because we visited uh, the senior centers. Yeah. Um, and it, it was good. It was good. My, my, my boss, my, she said, don't call me your boss. I'm, I'm your, your colleague. Yeah. Uh, she also uh, was very, very supportive. And uh, yeah, my boss uh, Robin Finley uh, was very supportive during that time, and uh, I really learned a lot from her. Very patient woman, mm -hmm. and uh, very caring. She was also uh, working on her PhD when I was there. Oh, she okay. got a PhD. She. Uh, she's associated with Fordham University oh, okay. in Manhattan, and it was on. See, uh, uh, her thesis was on the uh, getting older and seniors. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, she retired recently, but we still keep in touch. Great. Yeah. It's, it's it's wonderful that a lot of the people that I admire and worked with, you know, have kept in touch with me through the years. Yeah, and it's. You know, yeah. wonderful that you are, have been continually surrounded by so many strong women, including yourself, of course, but like yeah. at every workplace that you yeah. were at. That's true, that's true. Uh, Girl Scouts was mainly women. Yeah. It was like 90% women. Yeah. And that was, again, another good experience. Absolutely. And when I worked at UBP, it was mainly women, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then, uh -huh, aha, as uh -huh, well. There was, yeah. I think the ratio there was uh, also uh, more women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, well, we, we lead the world, right? Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, so those were my, you know, my work experiences, but, you know, you you were asking me about my boards. Yeah, yeah. And I've been uh, on the Austos board for 40 plus years. Wow. And I'll, I'll tell you that story. Yeah. Uh, when I worked at AHA, um, Wally Edgecombe got in touch with uh, Elsa Robles, my my the director, executive director, and my friend. And uh, the president at Ostos then wanted to start an arts and culture uh, committee. Okay, yeah. And they wanted Elsa, you know, to come on board. And, and she, she said, I think this is better for you, Elsa. You, you go yeah. and represent us. So that's how I got there. Okay. And that was, uh, I guess it was like maybe 81, 82, somewhere around there. Yeah. That, that, that I started, you know, with Ostos. And uh, it was, again, a very, it was something new yeah. for them. It yeah. was new for me. 
uh, was the first board I had, you know, it wasn't even a board, it was called the Council uh, Advisory Board. Oh, okay, That's what I it see. was, Advisory Board. And uh, the president uh, was Mancuso. Mm. She was very, very uh, supportive of the project. Sure. And uh, it got bigger, you know, and, and more people came on. We had Bill Aguado there. Okay, and, yeah. And we had some just wonderful people uh, who cared about the Bronx and cared about the arts. Sure. So I'm, I've, all, I, all that is to say that I've been on, uh, besides the advisory, I became a board member to the foundation years later. Okay, yeah. When they, uh, CUNY insisted that we had to have a, a foundation board. Mm -hmm. And I was named to it uh, by uh, the president then, uh, Dolores Fernandez. Okay. And uh, just to add to that, Dolores Fernandez was a classmate of mine. Oh, wow. At Westbury. Wow. And she, but she went on, and she had two or three children when she was going to school yeah. as well, but her, hers were younger. Sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, she, she got her PhD and she uh, moved on and, and became the, the president at one point. Yeah. And she was there for a good 10 years. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It was, so um, I've been through many presidents. I knew a few before I got there. Yeah. But from Mancuso on, uh, at Mancuso, uh, at the, um, Isaura. Okay. Isaura was, uh, was the next, Santiago was her last name. And then came Dolores Fernandez. Then, uh, Felix, uh, Rodriguez Matos, which is, uh, uh, now our chancellor. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had another uh, president, and now we have the first woman president, uh, Daisy De Filippo, mm. is now uh, leading the the college. Yeah. So I have seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. But it is one of the the boards that I, I feel closest to. Sure. Uh, I do it in memory of my sister. Absolutely. Because I, I know how much she, she fought for Ostos. And uh, so whenever I do something for Ostos, I, I feel I'm doing it in her, her memory. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, it, it was under threat of being closed down within a few years of it even opening. Yes. Which is insane. And yes. other people had to struggle so much to keep it open the first decade. Yeah. I forgot to mention David Gomez was the one before the uh, president now. Oh, okay, okay, so, yeah. Yeah, I must mention him too because, you know, they've all been, all have been presidents that had uh, a lot of uh, feeling, a lot of... Uh, uh, wanting for Austos to survive and to flourish. Sure, sure, absolutely. And for, and for our community, so that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so Austos to me is, is uh, my family, you know, part of my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then from Austos, I, I, uh, I went to, uh, well, I'm still there. I'm still there. One day I said to, to the president, uh, maybe I should resign, you know, and, and move on, to, you know, because I, I feel I'm getting older and all that. He said, oh, no, 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 you stay right here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so I'm still there and, and I'll be there till I can't do it anymore. But yeah. right now we're doing Zoom meetings, so, so that's good. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, I went to Center for Puerto Rican Study. Yes, okay, yeah. They had an advisory, uh, uh, Friends of Fed Centro. Okay, sure. And that was 
a good, mm, I could say about 30 years ago. Okay, yeah. And so it's been on and off. It, uh, I'm hoping that the new executive director, Mariman, uh, Yarima, uh, will, uh, uh, Bonilla is the last name. No relation to the founder okay, of Bonilla. Sure. Uh, first woman to lead the centro. Yeah. So that should be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, Comité Noviembre. Oh, sure, sure. And yeah, I've been there. Uh, wow. Well, I was very supportive when they started. Uh, they started around the 85, mm. 85, 86, around there. And actually, uh, they just went through their 35th anniversary. Oh, okay, okay, so. And uh, I became a member, I guess, around 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, not a member. Uh, yeah, member on the board. Member on the board. But I had always been supportive of them. Sure. And it. Uh, I worked with, with them, uh, two committees yeah. that, that are very important. One is a scholarship for, for young people uh, to go to college. And the other one is to recognize uh, some of our uh, unsung heroes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Lo mejor de la comunidad. Okay, the best of our community. Sure. So among those two, and I co-chair with with, uh, with another person, with Lisa, uh, with the young people, and Suleka Carrera uh, with, uh, with the uh, unsung years. Yeah. So that takes a lot of my time as well. Oh, I'm sure. And we've had some really good times together. We've gone to Puerto Rico for uh, finding our roots. Yeah. And that's been great. Yeah. Uh, it's been up until COVID, you know, we were doing a lot. We, uh, we did uh, humanitarian uh, trips, but uh, also cultural, where we visited, again, places we wouldn't have done on our own. Sure. Because, you know, uh, traveling to, even though it's a small island. <laughs> it can take a long time. It can take a long time. Because the mountains. Or, the mountains. Yeah. And so, and... We had fun. Uh, last year they were going to do it. Uh, actually, this year they were going to do it in person, and and then the uh, the COVID spiked up again, mm -hmm. and they canceled. So I don't know what's going to happen for next year, but hopefully you know, they'll be able to do it again. Yeah. And uh, so those are the three, uh, you know, that I work very hard. Sure. And, and look forward to to their activities and and I give my my all. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's sometimes I I I wonder how much I can do because, you know, it gets harder as you know, to get it around but sure. uh, but I I'm very positive about doing that. Yeah. I'm very positive. So those are my, you know, uh, my uh, boards, and I've been on other boards, which I'm not uh, any longer. But I was yeah. on the UNICEF board. Ah, yes, I remember you mentioned that. To I me. was on the UNICEF board, and that was exciting. Uh, meeting once a month at the United Nations. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was there for about five years. Okay, sure. And that was at the recommendation of someone that was dear to me. She she was on the board and she recommended me. And let me see who else. You know, I, I forget I forget so many things because I you know you, you do things and you just don't think about it. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, but doing the, the, uh, I even, you know, because of my association with UNICEF, I even went to the funeral for, for Audrey Hepburn. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Went to the funeral. Uh, it was at 
think St. Thomas Church in Manhattan, I think that's the name of it. Mm. And uh, it was a beautiful service. Sure. It was a beautiful service. The other thing that, that I, uh, through my friend again, uh, that I went to, uh, it was a UNICEF uh, fundraiser, you know, uh, sort of gala. Yeah. And uh, I met, uh, what's his name? The uh, uh, Afro American, Danny Glover. Oh, Danny Glover. He okay. was sitting next to the table next to me, so you know I went over and Absolutely. I said, Look to him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was that was kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet yeah. he's involved in a lot of different things. Yes, he's very, yeah, he's very political. And, yeah, yeah. The talking about meeting people, I didn't tell you this. I'm, I'm going to go back a yeah, little bit. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. When I was uh, 13, 14 years old, yeah, about 13, 14, I was a a ra rabid Yankee fan. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I used to go by myself because none of my friends were interested. Yeah. I used to go to Yankee Stadium when they were here. Yeah. Like two, three times a week. Wow. <laughs> and you know, the, the seats were 50 cents for the bleachers. Wow. But we used to stand outside and wait for them. Yeah. And Joe DiMaggio and Phil Rizzuto. Wow. And... Uh, Tommy Hendrix, Yogi Berra. Okay, yeah. So all of them, close up, when wow. they used to come in. I'm sure that, you know, they can't do that now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they used to stop and give autographs and talk to you. Wow. It was, oh, Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle, too, okay. Yeah. Joe Page, Satchel Page. Yeah. I saw all of them. Wow. Did, did any of your family members uh, introduce you to baseball or you found it on your own? No. Uh, my uncle was a baseball. Okay. He was a Yankee. But at home, my mom was a, a Dodger fan. Okay. Yeah. And Lillian was a, a, a giant, New York giant. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. I was the Yankee fan. So you could imagine what the household was like. <laughs> Evelina never really got into it. Yeah. Yeah, she just, but we did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I used to love it. And I used to, and my heart would sink when the Yankees would lose. <laughs> yeah. And then when I, I met Tony, he wasn't a baseball uh, a fan. So I uh, sort of let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now my, my, my friend that lives in Arizona, my childhood friend. Sure. She's a rabbit Yankee fan. I says, where were you when I was going by myself? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? She's a Yankee fan and she's also a Jet fan. Oh, wow. <laughs> she's football. So, but I never got into football. Sure, it's I, baseball, I, huh? I, I don't see anything in it. I can't, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. So... Well, let's, let's, I think I, I gave you enough stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on, wonderful on. stories. Yeah. Wonderful stories. Uh, I have one kind of um, uh, final question for you, maybe um, uh, before we get into the tour, whether that's this uh, session or the next one. And that's, um, uh, what does the Bronx represent to you? Community. Yeah. You know, I've lived through the Bronx where it was the Bronx. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, later on when, you know, it was kind of sad to see the changes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, my childhood Bronx was wonderful. Yeah. It, uh, even though, you know, I had little incidences, it still was a good place to to live and to uh, meet people and like I told you before my childhood friends that uh, up until you know I still have a few the others have passed on yeah yeah but I have wonderful memories wonderful memories absolutely and I hold on to those memories absolutely 
Then the Bronx that I came to know as an adult, and I'm talking about the 60s and 70s, wasn't so great. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the everything had changed, the housing, the this, the that, they, you know, they had taken away so much. I know. That I had ex good things that I had experienced. Uh, the education. Yeah. And the encouragement from my teachers, you know, which were, you know, uh, well received. And now, in the 60s, with the, uh, the co op uh, co op uh, city being built. Yeah. And I was already up in Gun Hill Road and, and had experience living north of the South Bronx. Yeah. I was, um, it was, uh, it hurt. Yeah. It hurt a lot to see the changes that were happening and were affecting my people. Absolutely. Because a lot of my uh, friends and, and relatives were still living in the South Bronx. Sure. And when we decided to move to Co-op City, we did it because it was financially it was going to be good for us and, yeah. and also the living a brand new apartment uh, uh, everything you know they they painted a wonderful picture which it was yeah but what it did do was that it, it emptied out the concourse yeah and that whole area and because a lot of my neighbors came from there sure and it was just devastating yeah to see and then uh, not only the concourse with the with the buildings being uh, you know people living people that went to live there which were my people yeah the services went down uh, immediately yeah immediately yeah and not only from the landlords but from the city itself absolutely so that was difficult and then the cross bronx yeah yeah the expressway yeah. that really affected the bronx because a lot of people were displaced absolutely along the way so it's been a, a and i keep using the word bittersweet because even though you know we moved to this wonderful uh, community um, many of my people were suffering at the same time. Yeah. And I was almost embarrassed to say that I lived up in Co-op City knowing, yeah. you know, that other people were suffering. So if we look at it now, there is gentrification and that gentrification again is going to affect the people that are living here. Absolutely. Because the buildings that are going up are up a luxury building. Yeah. With so called a small amount for afford affordable housing, but it's not affordable for anyone who lives exactly in the Bronx. And my own nephew was affected, uh, Joey. Joey yeah. Conzo was affected with uh, his uh, apartment recently and had to make a move uh, a year ago, just before Christmas. The new landlord said to the tenants that. They had three months to leave, to, to move out. Wow. And thank God that Joey, you know, knew a lot of people. And uh, in the press, yeah. the media. Yeah. So he, he moved on and he started, uh, you know, negotiating too. He became the, the person, the lead person to negotiate. Wow. And yeah. uh, the landlord uh, gave them a year. Yeah. So uh, right now he's, he's he is moving uh, soon. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But um, uh, he found he found a place. So, but you know it it's it's difficult because you know you you have family nearby and uh, and you really at this point don't want to really want to start a new a new life, but. Yeah. You, you know, and some sometimes you just have to. Yeah. And it's not just him; it's uh, that whole building. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, what's interesting is that uh, they made it a, con a condominium. Wow, okay. And the prices were, if you left New York, New York City, you could buy a house with that money. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it hurts. It really hurts. Yeah. Uh, especially you know when you feel so you feel so close to being here absolutely now uh, things have changed in co-op uh, uh, before it was 80% uh, Jewish yeah and the 20% was other sure and Puerto Ricans were others yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so were you know whoever else uh, Asians or uh, you know people from different countries, yeah. immigrants. But anyway, uh, it's been a good experience. I, I love my apartment, and but I still see again, you know, uh, the things are beginning to change. You know, Lillian used to say that every twenty-five years things change. Yeah, yeah, and I think. I'm beginning to believe that. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I believe it with with uh, with housing and with education <laughs> and with everything that goes with it. But uh, I'm very fortunate to have a, a wonderful family, and uh, I have a, a granddaughter that's already uh, an adult. But I have a little one that's four years old, four and a half. She'll wow. tell you. And uh, we call her Q, and Q is just so smart. And I, I want to tell you something she did for, for Thanksgiving that I, I need recorded for eternity. Absolutely. My, my son Paul uh, uh, was here for Thanksgiving. It was just the four of us and Q. And just before we sat down to dinner, he said to her, you know, Paul said the prayer, you know, about being grateful and thankful. And then when he finished, she says, could I say my prayer? <laughs> and we said, yes. And we all looked at each other. She says, I'm grateful for my mommy and daddy and Tata, that's me, yeah, yeah. and my sister. Yeah. And also for my ancestors. Beautiful. <laughs> and we all, you know, we just looked at each other and, you know, I, the tears almost came down because this four and a half year old was able to, to express herself so beautifully. Yeah, yeah. So wow. So we're looking forward to Christmas. Absolutely. With her because she just brings a lot of joy. Absolutely. And uh, with the <laughs> with the uh, new technology, I speak to her every day. That's wonderful. And we see each other on FaceTime. Yeah. And that's great. That is great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So last night I couldn't talk to her because she was so tired. She fell asleep before they called me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she asked, "Does she have a good, uh, long day?" Oh yeah. Because <laughs> she comes out of school. And she then uh, goes to the playground. They, they take her to the playground. Oh, okay, so sure. She's all over the place. <laughs> I'm sure she is. And, th and this week she was extremely happy because her, her father came to, to read to the children. Oh, wow, yeah. And uh, I said, what? I asked uh, Kim, what, what, uh, he did, what book did he read them? He says, guess. Dr. Seuss, <laughs> Green Eggs and Ham, and well, it makes sense. That's what he used to love when he was little. Yeah, That's funny. yeah. But uh, the, uh, she said that Q was very, very happy. Yeah. That her father was there reading the book. She, yeah, yeah. She could hardly restrain herself. <laughs> yeah. So you know it. Some good things have happened, some very good things. I shouldn't say I'm grateful, I'm thankful because so many things Absolutely. in my life and the people that, that surround me. Yeah. And I do have an older son, uh, 
who lives in Brooklyn too, and that's Anthony, and uh, his wife Carmen. So, uh, and then I have all my nieces and nephews, you know, yeah, from yeah, uh, yeah. from Lorraine and from uh, uh, Evelina's children. So, it, it's uh, the list goes on. I have Anita and Donnie who who are always, you know. Uh, asking me if I need anything, and sure. they'll pick me up and and take me to the store and, and do things. So uh, I feel very, very fortunate to have them close by. Absolutely. Yeah. So things are are, are moving along, and uh, and I appreciate the fact that you know we've been able to meet and talk. And uh, we'll see where we would go from here. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate everything that you've shared, and it's been such a pleasure so far. Thank you.